All right, so before I get to problem seven, I just wanted to go back real quick on problem number six and just to kind of make sure that you're understanding the concept of p-value. So remember, when you do a p-value, that's just the, well, first of all, you gotta get the test statistic. And in, in this problem, this was number six, the test statistic was a negative two. What the p-value does is it's gonna take that negative two and because since this is a lower tail test, it's gonna be looking to the left you're gonna basically look this number up in your Z, Z, Z table and you wanna get the cumulative probability to the left, all right? So you're finding the area to the left of this number. So if this had been a positive number and it was an upper tail test, then of course you would have been going to the right like on the previous ones. So just to kind of clear that up in case you were wondering what that meant. So like in this problem, they ended up with a, uh, a p-value at the bottom here. They ended up with a p-value of 0 0.0228. And again, they were looking to the left of negative two. All right, so I just wanted to make sure that was clear. I didn't put that in the last uh, slide. All right, now let's check out number seven. And in number seven, on what the, what's gonna change in this particular problem is that it's gonna be not the sigma known scenario, but we're gonna call this uh, sigma unknown. And what I mean by sigma unknown that means that we're gonna be using what they call the sample standard deviation and not the population standard deviation. And therefore, we will, we will be using uh, the T distribution table when we look up our areas, okay? All right, so let's check this one out. Everything else though, in terms of how they set up uh, the hypothesis, the null and the ultimate should be the same. So notice they give us, in this case, we have the null, and the alternate, notice the greater than symbol in the alternate. So we know this is gonna be an upper tail test. They say a random sample of 10, sample mean is 12, sample standard deviation is three, using significant level of 0 0.05. So a couple things here when we set up our parameters, I always do this in, in the lecture course. So if we set up our parameters, we're gonna have something that looks like this. So we've got, upper tail test. And when they say the decision rule, of course, alpha is 0 0.05. Our degree of freedom will be nine because remember it's 10 minus or n minus one is nine. And again, I'll just go ahead and make, just remind you again, they gave, they gave us this, but the sample mean turned out to be 12. So the way they're getting this number right here which I got to refer to as the critical value on your decision rule, is you go into your t-table and you're gonna be using alpha of 0 0.05 with degree of freedom of nine. And then let me show you that and what you're gonna get, just to make sure you know how to use this table. So notice this is a one tail test. Notice the t-distribution table has a row for one tail and two tail. This is gonna be a one tail. You go to alpha 0 0.05, and then here's your degree of freedom of nine, and then that's how they get that 1.833. So that's essentially how you do it. All right, so let's go back. All right, so then of course, you've got to do uh, your test statistic. And of course, all that is, is just like before. Uh, it's still gonna be, <clears throat> I'll just write this up here. It's X bar minus your hypothesized mean divided by your sample standard deviation over the square root of N. So to get, this is again part B, to get that number, you would have the sample mean of 12, hypothesized means 10, sample standard deviation is three over the square root of, again, of 10 as well. And that should give you about 2.108. So again, if I, just go ahead and redraw the curve like I had earlier. Remember this was an upper tail test, 1.833 would have been located right there. Is the test statistic in a rejection area? You bet. So that's good. In other words, 2.108 is greater than or equal to 1.833. So therefore it is, a, it is in a rejection area. So that's why in part C, they go ahead and say reject uh, the null. All right, and I think on that one, guys, I think that's it for problem seven.
Let's check out problem eight. And again, upper tail test. They gave us the null alternate. Sample of 10, sample main, same numbers. And I think on this one, this one might be a duplicate. Let me just check. I think when we, <clears throat> when we were adding it, I think this is the same as the previous one. I need to get that updated. But yeah, this is the same problem. So this one must must have got copied in twice. That's my apology. I'll get that fixed. All right, <clears throat> let's check out number eight. Eight is a two-tail test. All right, so two-tail test, remember alpha half. Now, remember on your T distribution table, there is going to be a row that says level significance, which is alpha for the two-tail test, and that's the row we're going to be using. So in this one, we got a sample of 12, sample means 407, sample standard deviation 6. So remember, that means sigma unknown significance level is 0 0.05. Okay. And so when you look at our parameters, let me make sure. Let's go to the table, I'll show you this. So on this particular one, <laughs> it was significance level of 0 0.01. Notice for two tail tests, they have a row here for 0 0.01. Be careful because if it's one tail test, you'd be using that column. But because it's two tail, you use 0 0.01 right there. And then to locate our value, it's going to be degree of freedom of 11. So at 0 0.01, you go all the way here, and it's 3.106 is where they're going to get that number. Okay. All right, so let's go back. And because it's two-tailed, that's why they say plus or minus 3.106. Test statistic is the same, just like we've been doing. That's, that should be repetitive, a repeat idea. So again, just to remind you, x bar minus mu, s over the square root of n. And let's see, again, our sample mean was 407. Minus 400, you know, so we're going to get a positive test at. And then it will be 6 over the square root of 12. They end up with 4, about 4.041. That's where they got that number. And of course, again, if we set this thing up, the way you want to be looking at this is we got an upper tail and a lower tail. You got minus 3.106 as the cutoff point any positive 3.106 and of course this number is definitely in a rejection area so you again you're going to say reject the null and i believe that would be part c and then of course there's everything else on that all right that is number eight <clears throat> now let's check out number nine just to kind of look at the wording looks like this is going to be an upper tail test because if you look at the last sentence it says using the significance level of 0 0.05 you want to conclude that the mean number of calls per salesperson is more so that means greater than so you want the alternate to be greater than okay so here's your no alternate you got to do the test stat and again it's going to be a sample standard deviation notice it says the standard deviation of the sample is 2.1 using 0 0.05 and they want you to get the test statistic. And again, your calculation for test statistic on part A here, I'll just show you the calculation right here. You just plug it into your formula and they get a very, very high value. Now on the T value of 1.07, I'm sorry, 1.703, that's the value you go to your T distribution table to look that up. You'll be needing to use, it looks like our sample size is uh, 28. And I'll just let me show you where that is in case you didn't see it. Always look for the sample size. Uh, here it is. The random sample 28 and your significance level is 0 0.05. So let me show you. Remember, I told you earlier in the T table, you got two rows, one for two tail, one for one tail. So on this particular one, you will be in the column that says 0 0.05, but this is gonna be for the one tail test. So you'll be in this column, and then you gotta go down to where you can find degree of freedom of 27. And I'll show you this, and this is where they come up with that number, 1.703. Okay, so once you got that, of course, this is going to be reject because that's a very, very large test statistic. All right, that's number nine. Number 10, 
<clears throat> on this one. That's another going to be upper tail test. Look at the last sentence. They're looking for, does Delaware have more income than the national average? More is greater. That means you want the alternate to be greater than. So the no is less than or equal to, alternate is greater than. Uh, they want you to do your decision rule 0 0.05. So remember your sample size is 10. So you just go to degree of freedom of nine at 0 0.105. You should be able to find that, te that test statistic in your T distribution table. Then you just compute your value of your test statistic. Again, I'll show you that down below. This is part C. And you can see in your value of your test statistic, you're gonna get about 3.16. Of course, here's they're showing you again where to get that, that number up, 1.833. Here's your test statistic. And of course, this number is definitely greater than 1.833. So you're gonna say reject the null. All right. So that is my comments on 10. We got two more. 11 on this one, it looks like they give us, uh, so given the value of, uh, they give us hypothesis. They just give you, a, it's an upper tail test. We got one, two, three, four, five samples. Sample size is five. Significance level is 0.01. And of course, conclude that the population is less. This one's gonna be a lower tail test because they mentioned the word less. You want it to be in the lower part of that. So you're gonna be having negatives. So of course, you go to your T-table, look at 0.01 degree of freedom of, uh, of four, and you should be able to find uh, that T value of 3.747. And once you got that, then you got, of course, compute the test statistic. And of course, we've done that a few times, so again, I'll just show you the calculation on the test statistic. On this one, here's your test statistic calculation right there, negative. And then, of course, this is gonna be, it's not in a rejection area. So it's gonna be a fail to reject. So here they're saying do not reject. And then of course the answer is no. And then I wanna show you how to get this p-value. Now on this one, I'm gonna give you this one because I don't expect you to use, if you don't know how to use Excel and you can't plug it into a calculator, I typically always have you use a table, but they give you an exact p-value of 0.0653 on this one. So if you, have, if you struggle with this one, uh, you can email me and I'll just give you the answer. But the way I would say is if you went to your table, what again, what you're doing is, is you're using the absolute value of 1.9. You're trying to find that in the T table. So if I use 1.9 in my T table, let me show you this. Go back. And remember, it's degree of freedom of four. So 1.9 would fall between 1.533 and 2.132. So 1.9 is gonna be between these two numbers. So using one tail test, you're, you would say the range of p-values would be between 0 0.05 and 0.1. It's not an exact thing when you use the tables, you just have, would have to give a range. But of course you'd say the p-value because this t-value would lands between these two values, it's also the area of that T value is gonna be between 0 0.05 and 0 0.10. And of course, when they plugged into the calculator, they got 0 0.0653. And of course, that's between 0 0.05 and 0 0.10. So this is the one, if you do get stuck on this one, you struggle with this one, um, they don't give you an option to use the table. So just email me and I'll make sure that uh, when we get to that part that, that hopefully everybody's clear on what you gotta do with it. All right, that's number 11. And then finally, number 12, uh, same thing on this one. I'm just gonna show you this. So it looks like this is gonna be a lower tail test. Hold on, let me get that down. They want this to be a lower tail test as you read it. For some reason my, there we go. For some reason, oh, maybe I gotta do my new shirt. Hold on, let me get back. I'm on the wrong screen, apology. There we go, all right. Uh, so in this case, we've got, uh, it looks like they're considering a new method of assembling a computer. It requires a mean time of 60 minutes, standard deviation is 2.7. The mean time, they want to conclude if the new method's faster, that means you want to be less. You want, you want it to be lower. Faster means lower, less time. So having said that, so let me clear that drawing. There we go. So as the page down, you'll notice you would come up with a lower tail test, you gotta get your critical values. 
uh, in this case, uh, using uh, your sample. Let me go back just to make sure you see that. You'd have to calculate your test statistic. Uh, they want 0 0.10 as your level of significance. I'm sorry, as your level of uh, significance. And then, of course, at some point in time, they want you to calculate uh, the probability of a type 2 error, which I haven't talked about just yet. And I believe in this one, yeah, I believe this one, we're going back to the sigma known scenario. Yeah, this one's back to the sigma known. They don't, they didn't do a good job of spelling this one out, so I'll just kind of give this one to you. This is back to sigma known. Usually they should spell it out a little bit better than that. So we'll be back to your Z table. And so, because when you do your test, if you look at uh, this particular problem, you know, in their explanation, they're back to using Z. So here's your setup for that. You got your no alternate, your Z value, and so forth. So remember, your sample mean was 58, and, your, and, and of course, 2.7, they are telling you is your sigma. Now, on the, um, on the probability of type 2 error, Okay, how they calculate that. So they show you this calculation right here in part B on how they're coming up with that 0 0.0096. Let me show you, I'll illustrate this now. Let me write this out real quick. So here's essentially how they're doing it. So if we know, here's my curve, we know that 60 is your hypothesized mean. And of course, we know that we're looking to the left as our lower tail test. And so once they take that, uh, that Z value, which I'll just say, usually if you look this up, you'd most likely say your critical Z value is right around negative 1.28, okay? But when you factor in the distance between here and 60, which is one point, which is they say a negative 1.28 standard deviations. So if you took that negative 1.28 and multiplied that by your by your standard deviation, which of course is 2.7 over the square root of 24, that'll give you a distance or a variation that's equal to approximately negative 0 0.70 five, four, it keeps going, it's a continuous number, right? So what you can then do then is, is the data point, the variable right at that point, you would take 60 minus 0 0.705, let's just say, and that's gonna give you about 59.29, okay? That would be the variable right there. So to get, so that's where they're coming up with this 59.29 if you're wondering what that is. And so at that point, once you do that, you can then, then just convert that uh, into your Z value. And this is what they're doing. So it's using the sample mean 58 as mu1. So at that point, uh, if 58 mu point is uh, mu1, then you would simply just take the difference, you know, just like you did before, you take the, you could take the 58, uh, the difference between that and 59.29, and then divided that by uh, 2.7 over the square root of 24. And at that point in time, uh, you would get, uh, in this case, it's gonna be a 2.34. And I think I, re I reversed that, it should be 59.29 minus 50. It really doesn't matter, as long as you get that Z value. And then of course, you're looking to the left, you take that value and at that point in time, that's where they're getting this probability of what they call the type two wear. So that's how you do it. They do give you a couple of illustrations in your textbook on how to calculate that, um, but that's how you would get uh, part B. And so type, type two wear point zero zero nine six. Hey guys, I think that's it on the chapter 10.